let's let's hear some questions from you, uh, for Dr. James. I'd like to hear about uh, when did the Richmond Crusade for Voters take place, and how important do you think that had been for the evolution of uh, African Americans receiving positions of power here in the community? <coughs> Crusade for Voters was a very, very powerful organization. And that organization was responsible for blacks being elected to city council and, and other uh, political positions in the area. Who were the founders? I mean, who was involved? William Thornton, uh, Fergie Reed, um, that's the third one now. Okay. And there are three of them. Okay. But they all passed now. And it's not as strong as it was. But that was a powerful organization. Mm -hmm. And when they put out that ballot, you could almost put your bottom dollar on those people are going to be elected. Let's go back here and then we'll go for the next Yes. Mm -hmm. My first question is more regarding. Um, I can hear. You can have to stand up. Come on up, right. All right. Um, I have two questions. Uh, my first question is more of a question about social justice and activism, just in general. Um, you spoke a little bit about Dr. King's book, Black Lives Matter, and how that was a younger generations connect uh, with people from your generation? Any advice you have uh, to be able to do that? Well, if young people would ever get into their thinking that just because you have a few years on you, you're not old and fogey and out of date. You have a lot of good sense, a lot of experience, and a lot of wisdom that would help them to reach some of the uh, things that need to make them be successful in life. But so often, young people say, oh, you out of date, you know what you're talking about. There's already back then, no good now. That's not true. That's not true. There's a lot of wisdom coming from these years that people have lived through certain experiences. And if they were only just listen to some of the older people, things would be much better off. And if older people would try and pretend that they're young, <laughs> explain and appreciate the fact that they have lived through certain experiences, and those experiences would not only help them, but would help future generations. But so often, you, you take that some mothers now, instead of trying to be a mother, they try to be a friend to the daughter or to the son. Be a mother. Father, be a father. Don't, 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 don't try to be a teenager when your teenage years are over. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes parents make that mistake. Was there a part, a uh, second part? Uh, uh, second question? It is kind of a plug. <coughs> plug? Yeah. Can, why don't we come back for a plug? Yeah, That's good. Plug. Yes, sir. Um, thank you for your, your sharing. Um, is there anything that you recall as, as a, the dean of Jimmy or any of your experiences? in your theological uh, influence that distinguishes the black preacher during the 60s mm -hmm. from any other era? Do, do, do you recall that they stood out 
I'd say in the 60s compared to the time prior to that or even after that. Was there anything in particular that distinguished the black preacher in the 1960s compared to decades prior or decades afterward? What was happening during that period <coughs> that you remember specifically related to the black preacher? Their influence and so forth. Their influence and so forth. Oh, I think people listen. You see, the black church was <coughs> one of the free, few free black organizations in the world. And people respected the black church. And the black preacher held a special role in that whole period of, 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 of operation. And therefore, when he spoke, people listened. But, but now, it appears that uh, the preachers who are getting the the biggest commendation are, are the showmakers, the drama man. <laughs> People that give you make make you uh, well, they're going in the entertainment, but but the the substance is not the same today as it was then. And I think that's the biggest difference. We have lost the substance hmm. in much of our spirituality. It's outside show. And what do you think about the 1960s cultivated such a strong role for uh, the black preacher, the black minister? Well, well, the black church was the strength of the community. You take a whole Martin Luther King movement which was rooted in the black church. The enrichment, three of the four persons who led the civil rights movement in Richmond were black preachers. That's where the leadership was. But, 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 but today it's... it's you know, <coughs> It just changed. It just changed. We're looking for something that uh, doesn't have the strength of stability that we had back then. I was just wondering if you might expound on who those three black leaders were. And also, in that, um, if you could share any of your memories of Dr. Martin Luther King in Richmond during the 60s. So what? So who, who were those three black leaders you just mentioned first, and then? In Richmond? Yes. I can call them in. C.C. Scott, Robert Taylor, J. Hoover Packard, and uh, the fourth one, I just two marks to call his name. <laughs> what, what, what do you remember, Dr. James, about Martin Luther King in Richmond in the 1960s? Well, Martin Luther King, had, he came here several times and it was very, very helpful. He uh, appeared on the campus and uh, he, was a, he was a good, um, a, a good advisor, counselor. And he wired Walker, who was also a graduate of Union, was his chief lieutenant. He was a graduate of Union, and uh, he was very helpful during that period. In fact, he retired from the church in New York. He made Richmond home. He lives here now. There's a hand in the back. Yes, please. Listening to you talk about the several firsts that you encountered um, of some leadership jobs and abilities that you had, um, in those groundbreaking eras that you had to overcome and conquer, and I know you've talked about character and a person, how, how do you feel like within so many things that are going on in society from then to now, a person who may have not been identified as a potential leader would move forward in a leadership capacity? Well, First of all, a person has to have the respect 
of the community. It, it can't be uh, uh, a fake. He can't be fraudulent. He has to be genuine. And he has to uh, be the kind of person who doesn't mean, who doesn't mind making sacrifices if necessary. See? And, uh, and, and people will soon find out whether or not you, you are genuine or, or, if, or, or are you a fake. And so many of these fail because they, they're fraudulent. They're in it for what they can get out of it. I, I'm getting the uh, proverbial time signal from the side. Do we, do we squeeze in one more? Is that one more? Is that okay? Go, we'll do the last question. Yeah, uh, I wonder if you uh, remember Charles Sherrod, Frank Penston. Uh, Sherrod went on to oh, lead yeah. that Albany movement and become a, a real significant influence. Uh, and uh, they were from, uh, came out, uh, he came out of Petersburg too. Mm -hmm. So, do you remember them? And I you remember like Charles Sherrod came to Charles in my office asking if we would support his movement. And we said yes, 100%. Mm -hmm. And we supported Charles and Pinkston and that whole group. In a full, a full support. Did you keep up with him as an alum and uh, <coughs> when he went yeah. off to Georgia? He and his wife, yes. yes. His wife, of course, uh, was part of that controversy That's and right. not, not so many years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm sure we could go on for hours and hours listening to, to uh, Dr. James' incredible life. Please join us.